What a wonderful day. Just look at these plants and flowers. It really is good to get out of the classroom and be with nature sometimes. Oh, those signs? They're just warnings for us to be cautious around some plants and trees. It's because we're the ones who should adapt to nature while enjoying its beauty. Have you ever wondered why trees have saps? Or why some plants have thorns or spikes? You'd think they are useless and unnecessary, but sometimes these small structures are essential to the plant's existence. Dr. Giuseppe Di Bio, a world-class educator and the first Asian to win the Intel International Excellence in Teaching Award, will take us to the wilds of Atlan with her students to learn more about plant dishes and what makes them thrive on land. Hi, Teacher Abby. Hello, Kay Hubbers. We are now at the foot of Campo Verde Forest in Tangalanaklan to study plants. Have fun with us as we explore the adaptations that make plants so successful in land and create forests such as this beautiful Campo Verde Forest. Students, we all know that plants are very important. They provide food and oxygen for all living organisms. In fact, without plants, the earth will not survive. Because of their dominance in terrestrial ecosystems and their importance to humans, let us focus on the vascular plants or tractocytes. Vascular plants have conducting tissues, the xylem and the phloem, which conducts water and dissolve nutrients throughout the plant body. Vascular plants consist of two major regions, the root system and the shoot system. Look at this plant. The root system is usually below the ground, while the shoot system is usually found above the ground. The shoot system consists of stems, leaves, buds, flowers, and fruits. Do you know that just like multicellular animals and other multicellular organisms, plants are also made up of different kinds of cells? These cells vary in size, structure, and the functions they perform. Observe these trees in the forest. What could be some signs that the trees are growing? You will observe that new leaves are still forming at the tips of the stem. Old leaves fall, but new leaves continue to be formed. The size of the trunks are very big, and I think it will continue to grow bigger. Also, the roots are very big. I think that these roots will continue to grow for as long as the plant is alive. Do trees ever stop growing? That's a very good question, Alfonso. Plants and animals grow in very different ways. As you grow from being a baby to an adult, all parts of your body become larger. When you have reached your adult height, you stop growing. In contrast, most vascular plants grow throughout their lives. They don't stop growing. They will continue to grow from the stems and the roots and will also grow in width as long as they are alive. That's why form forests with trees that are so big and tall just like the ones we have seen here. But there are flowering plants like the tomato that grow for one year and then die. You are right, Lorenzo. There are soft-bodied plants like most grasses, tomatoes, and many vegetables that live for only a year. These are called annuals. Woody plants such as trees and bushes are usually perennial and live for many years. These perennial plants would continue to produce new shoots and roots for as long as they live. Mom, why is this so? From the time they sprout, plants are composed of two different kinds of cells, the meristematic cells and the differentiated cells. The meristematic cells, also known as embryonic cells, are capable of producing new cells through a process called mitosis. Meristems are zones of undifferentiated cells whose sole purpose is to divide rapidly. Differentiated cells, on the other hand, are specialized in structure and function 
and usually don't divide. Normally, each time a meristematic cell divides, one daughter cell develops specialized structures and becomes a differentiated cell, while the other daughter cell remains meristematic or actively dividing. Continued divisions of the meristematic cells keep the plant growing throughout its life. The differentiated daughter cells, on the other hand, form permanent parts of the plants like the mature leaves, stems, and the trunk of trees. Where can we find the meristematic cells? There are two kinds of meristematic tissues, the apical meristem and the lateral meristem. The apical meristems are found at the growing tips of the stems and roots and are responsible for the primary growth or growth in length of the plant. The apical meristems produce new leaves, stems, and roots. The lateral meristems are composed of embryonic tissues located between vascular tissues of stems and at various parts of plant bodies. They account for the secondary growth in plants, resulting to increase in diameter of the plant body. The stems and roots of most trees become thicker and woodier as they age as a result of secondary growth. Two kinds of lateral meristems allow the plant to grow in width, the cork cambium and the vascular cambium. The cork cambium produces the bark on stems and roots. The vascular cambium produces the conducting vessels, xylem and phloem, which transport water and nutrients throughout the plant body. The production of bark and conducting vessels increase the thickness of the stems over time. Because flowering plants have a vascular cambium and can grow thicker over time, they also grow taller as nutrients can still be transported efficiently from the root of the plant all the way to the tip. Wow! It's amazing what a single meristematic cell can do. Its only purpose is to divide, yet because of this one and only function, a seed can become a plant, a plant can become a tree, and trees will continue on growing to form a forest. What happens then to the differentiated cells in the plants? The differentiated cells mature to become permanent tissues. All parts of the plant, aside from the meristematic tissues, are permanent tissues. The leaves, stems, and roots are made up of three kinds of permanent tissues, the dermal tissues, the ground tissues, and the vascular tissues. Where are these three kinds of permanent tissues found, and what are their functions? The dermal tissues cover the leaves, stems, and roots. They act like the skin of the plants. They are the plant's first line of defense against physical injury and pathogenic organisms. They also aid in the gaseous exchange between the plant and the environment. Dermal tissue is made up of two types of tissues, the epidermal tissues and the periderm. In herbaceous plants, the epidermis remains as the outer covering of the entire plant body throughout its life. The epidermal tissues of the stems and leaves is covered with waterproof, waxy cuticle secreted by the epidermal cells. Look at this leaf. The shiny coating in this leaf is called cuticle. The cuticle reduces evaporation of water from the plants. The periderm replaces the epidermal tissue and the roots and stems of woody plants as they age. The periderm is composed mainly of cork cells which have thick walls and are dead at maturity. Cork cells form the protective outer layers of the bark of trees and woody shrubs and the woody covering of the roots. Mm. What other structures are found in the plant epidermis? 
Some specialized structures found in the plant epidermis are the guard cells, the trichomes or epidermal hairs, and the root hairs. The stomata are the openings in the plant epidermis under the breathing organs of the plant. It is through the stomata where gas exchange occurs between the atmosphere and the interior tissue of the plant. The stomata are found on leaves, stems, and flowers, but are most abundant in the underside of the leaves. The stomata are surrounded by a pair of specialized epidermal cells, the guard cells. The guard cells regulate the exchange of gases by closing and opening the stomata. The guard cells open to allow carbon dioxide to enter and oxygen to leave the plant for efficient photosynthesis. Do you have any idea why the stomata are abundant on the underside of the leaves? Ma'am, so that the leaves can catch more water? I think that's not correct, Ashley. I think it's because direct sunlight on the upper surface of the leaf would cause increased evaporation of water via the stomata. During adverse environmental conditions, such as very warm weather and drought, the guard cells close the stomata to prevent water loss, thus preventing the plants from wilting. What are trichomes and what are their functions? Trichomes are the outgrowths of the plant epidermis, which results to the plant hairiness. Examples of trichomes are found in the leaves of tomatoes, okra, sugarcane, and many grasses. Trichomes help regulate heat and water balance in leaves. These epidermal hairs in many plant species are also specialized for defense against attack by insects. When present at high densities in the leaves, insects cannot eat the leaves because the trichomes serve as physical barrier to the underlying surface of the internal plant tissues. Beans have fish hook shaped trichomes that help to anchor their climbing vines as well as trap leaf hoppers and other insect pests. Some plants have trichomes that secrete sticky and toxic substances which can physically entrap or immobilize insects. Trichomes of the peppermint plant produce volatile oil called menthol, while those in marijuana plant produce tetrahydrocannabinols or THC. Both menthol and THC are used in medicinal preparation as pain-relieving drugs. Root hairs are epidermal outgrowth near the tips of the roots that take up water and nutrients from the soil. Ma'am, what are ground tissues? All other tissues in plants, aside from the dermal tissues and the vascular tissues, are ground tissues. These are abundant in the leaves, stems, and roots, and serve three basic functions. Basic metabolism, such as food production and respiration, storage, and support. Ground tissue is made up of several types of cells. The parenchyma cells are the most abundant of the ground tissues. Parenchyma tissues have thin walled cells that are alive at maturity and can divide. They are found in the softer parts of the plants, such as the mesophyll layer of the leaves, in the cortex of the stems and roots, and in pulp of fruits. They are sites of photosynthesis, respiration, and food storage. Colinchyma tissues consist of cells that are alive at maturity but usually cannot divide. Although strong, the cell walls of colinchyma cells are somewhat flexible. In herbaceous plants, in leaf stalks and young growing stems of all plants, colinchyma tissue is an important source of support. Sclerenchyma tissues consist of cells with thick, hardened secondary walls 
which are impregnated with a complex polysaccharide called lignin. Sclerenchyma cells don't contain living protoplasts and are dead at maturity. They mainly provide support and strength to plant parts. The two types of sclerenchyma cells are the sclerids and fibers. Sclerids are common components of the hard coats of many seeds and shells of nuts. The tough core of an apple or the gritty texture of pear and chico are formed by sclerids. Fibers are long, slender cells that may occur in single strands or bundles. For example, linen, piña cloth, and many of our textiles come from sclerenchyma fibers. Ropes and cords come from hard fibers of abaca. Mm, how about the vascular tissues of plants? What are they for? Vascular tissues are special kinds of tissues which transport water and nutrients within the plants. There are two kinds of vascular tissues, the xylem tissues and the phloem tissues. The xylem is the main water conducting tissue in plants. Water and dissolved substances are conducted upward through the roots, stems, leaves and flower stalks of the plant. The xylem is made up of tracheids and vessel elements which are both dead at maturity. The phloem conducts dissolved organic materials from the leaves to other plant parts. Unlike the xylem, the phloem is composed of living cells. The conducting elements of the phloem are the sieve cells and the sieve tubes. Wow! I didn't realize that aside from providing us with food and oxygen, the specialized cells and tissue of plants can have varied uses not only for plants themselves, but also for humans too. I didn't realize until now that fibers are specialized cells of plants called sclerenchyma cells. I am awed by how the simple meristematic cell of a plant can produce giant trees that can form our forests. So Kay Habers, remember the wisdom of planting a tree. The seedlings that you plant today will become trees in the next few years that will form the forest of tomorrow that will save the earth for the next generations to come. Bye Kay Habers! Bye! Bye. See, even the smallest structure of plants such as a spike, barb, or thorn has a function. There is indeed life form in the tiniest organism and most of the time, they play a major role in our lives because it is from little things that big things grow. Take the treatment of cancer for example. Cancer results from evolutions of cells, the smallest unit of life inside the body. There are over 100 different types of cancer and each is classified by the type of cell that is initially affected. Cancer harms the body when damaged cells divide uncontrollably to form lumps or masses of tissue called tumors. By studying cells, early identification of the disease is possible as well as prevention and development of new intervention strategies. Uh-oh, I have to go. See you next time. Bye!